as you dodge down, you do an extra spin behind your back, quick, smash everything. Oh! In this video, I'm going to be talking all about the Shaolin Monk Spade we have for sale at Enzo. I'm going to be talking about all of its features, give you a little bit of a history, some of the changes that may have happened to the Monk Spade over the years, and at the end, I'm going to show you a few little things just to get you started training with the Monk Spade. Hi, my name is Sam Swift. I've been doing martial arts for the past 34 years and I've been the owner of Enzo Martial Arts for the past 17 years. If you're liking this video, click the little icon, subscribe to this channel and get all the latest videos from Enzo Martial Arts. So let's get into this video and learn all about the Shaolin Monk Spade we have for sale at Enzo. Now the Shaolin Monk Spade, you know there are other stars that use Monk Spades, but you know, Shaolin is the one that they're most known for. Also, this particular style of monk spade, like this, the way this one's made up, is definitely something you will see being used in the Shaolin Temple and other schools around the area and different classes all over the world that are training in Shaolin. Now, there's there's obviously a long history of Shaolin monks in 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 China, and there's you know they're known for doing a lot of chores and working in and around the temple. So a lot of the weapons are kind of tools as much as they are weapons. Now, the Shaolin monk spade is a perfect example of this. And you know, originally it would have been like just a spade. So, you know, at times throughout history where it's not you're not able to carry weapons and it's illegal to carry weapons, something like a spade carrying that around would be a really good thing to fend off bandits if need be. If you're getting attacked, if you're getting into a problem, you've got something that you can bash people with. So a spade is a very good thing, you know, an everyday item effectively if you're a farmer that you can carry about with it with you like sticks are another really good example of just an everyday item if you look up ancient monk spades they do look pretty different this is definitely a more stylized version of the monk spade if you tried to like dig a hole with this I, you know you wouldn't do very well it's not the best thing now i don't think they're necessarily spades in terms of digging holes in the same way we would have had them if you see like ancient monk spades, they're a much, much smaller head and it's more like a kind of axe head style end, you know, that would obviously be solid, very, very tough. And you do see them nowadays still being used that certain tools for like stripping uh, bark off wood, off big trees, look quite similar to monk spades. I was also watching a video the other day of them harvesting agave like out in South America. And the tools they use to hack those apart, again, look very similar to monk spades. So this type of tool, I think probably evolved separately, just because that particular shape is very, very useful for different like farming type, type jobs. But yeah, that type of, of spade with a much, much thinner, almost ax head, would be really, really good for like chopping roots up, yes, yeah, stripping trees, things like that. So that's probably where the weapon originated from. That type of weapon would then be carried around, you know, and as it evolved into becoming more of a weapon than, than a tool, like the heads maybe got bigger, you know, you get these crescent moons on the other end, which also would help balance the weight between the head and the bottom, which you probably wouldn't need if it's a spade. So yeah, this, this is definitely a very stylized version of, the, of its original tool sort of origin. So if we have a look at it, this monk spade is, the head is actually hollow. Now this is probably partly to do with cost and, and weight. You know, if that, that was a solid bit of metal, it's pretty thick, it would be incredibly heavy, incredibly hard to use. Now you do see some people using like heavy monk spades, but to be honest, my personal opinion is they probably never existed, like apart from for ceremonial reasons. A really heavy monk spade wouldn't make any, any sense at all. Either you'd have a solid head that was much, much, much smaller, or you get like a hollow head for like demonstrations and competitions and whatever, which is much more easy to wield around. Now you get these rings on it as well, which makes a really nice jangling effect. 
And I've said in other videos, if you've seen any of the other videos I've been putting out, there's loads of different ideas for what these rings like were for. Some people say they're for like looping swords in, disarming people. Some people say they're for like distracting like their opponent. Some people say they're for scaring away animals. There's loads and loads of different reasons or all possible reasons, but they're on there anyway. And they're really good for demonstrations because they give a good jangling sound. So they can make your, your performance look more spectacular with that noise added element. Now you get like a sort of metal shaft as well on top of the spade and then you get a wooden staff all the way down. This is quite a common um, style for, of weapons in, in Shaolin Kung Fu where you get a wooden shaft that's then painted maroon. And you get the crescent moon on the bottom which is also like hollow, again to help balance the spade and the bottom. If this was solid again it would be really really heavy and probably quite expensive. So that's the monk spade. Now you do see a bit of variation in monk spade as well. Over the years we've had different ones in, the supply does change coming from China and you just kind of got to get what you can when it comes to these weapons because it's not the most like readily available weapon. It's not that common, you know, quite hard to get so we just grab what we can. Now sometimes the top will be just a sheet of metal so it's just a single flat sheet attached to the shaft and sometimes you get them like with different hole designs inside them. Now if that is the case, you know, it's still a monk spade, you still use it in exactly the same way, but yeah, that you know, there are just different variations. Sometimes the heads are shaped slightly differently and whatnot. Um, if that is the case and we do have one different, we will update the pictures on the website. You know, if there's any changes in the description that needs to be made, we will do that. But you know, you can always give us a call just to double check, but we'll do our best to keep the website up to date as much as possible. So who would use the monk spade? Well, I guess because of the name, the fact it's called a monk spade, you'd probably only find it in, in styles of Kung Fu or Chinese martial arts that are related to the, to the monks in a way. So you probably get it in some of the Taoist systems and you definitely get it in the Buddhist systems. So anything that doesn't have like a martial connection, you probably wouldn't, uh, a religious connection, you probably wouldn't see them. But you definitely see them in styles like Shaolin that has a very, very strong Buddhist link. So you also do see them in Bagua and that's obviously got Taoist links. So yeah, it, there's different styles, you know, with those religious links, we'll probably have the monks made in. So just having a look at the dimensions now, I'll put all the dimensions online. Obviously there's quite a lot of different features on here with different different uh, lengths and widths and whatnot. But I'll just give you a few in the video just so it gives you an idea of exactly what you're getting. Now I'll do the classic struggling to try and do the full length of this. And this comes in about 70 inches, 170 centimeters. So yeah, just a little bit, sort of the same height as me, 5'9", something like that. Now in terms of the width of the spade head, the whole width, I don't know if you can see that. There we go. It's coming in around 24 centimeters, nine inches, something like that. And have a look at the weight. This weighs in about 1.3 kilos. So, you know, not particularly heavy, but considering what it is, it's pretty lightweight, probably compared to its original origins. So at Enzo Martial Arts, we pride ourselves on having a wide selection of Chinese martial art weapons. And we like to think we can get some pretty rare stuff. So as well as the Shaolin Monk Spade, we also get leather bull whips, pretty popular tiger forks, Kung Fu spears, and the very new to Enzo, monkey staffs. So as promised at the beginning of the video, I'll just sort of give you a few tips and tricks just to get started with the Monk Spade. Now, you know, by the time you're getting onto this, you should be relatively advanced in your training, but I will just give you a few little things that you tend to see only with Monk Spade. You know, nothing fancy, but just a few little things. Now the Monk Spade really, really likes its spinning. There's loads of spinning. I guess if it's got a fair weight to it, you just want the momentum of the thing just going round and round. Also, this isn't that much shorter than the width of the shop. So I'll do my absolute best not to smash the shop and the monk's face bits, but we'll see how we go. So bring it up in front of you so both your fists are facing, facing away from you. And then you bring one fist behind you and catch it again behind your back, fists away. 
and then back up in front of you, again fist away from you. So fists away behind your back and then fists away in front of you. So once you've got that, it's pretty simple to do. Pretty scary doing it inside the shop. Oh, and the thing's rattling and making all kinds of noise. But when you get a bit more space than what I've got, this is way more fun. So yeah, that's a really good one to do. Spin it above your head ah, and over your head. Now, there is an extension from this that you do see a lot with mug spade, is that it's just simply, a, you dodge down, you do an extra spin behind your back, which smash everything, oh, and over the top of your head. So yeah, that's a really good one to do. Bring it up over your head, do an extra spin behind your back. And back round to fists in front. So yeah, now, if I get myself a short stick, like this Joe staff, and I'm not risking it, you can actually get it so it's much, much faster. So you can really get some good momentum on it, getting it behind your back, over your head and round. So loads faster, if you've got the space, and not a lot of products to worry about. Thanks very much for watching, I hope it was useful. I hope you learned loads about the Shaolin Monk Spade we have at Enzo. If you like this video, click the little icon, subscribe to this channel, and get all the latest videos and updates from Enzo Martial Arts. Thanks very much, and I'll see you soon. Cheers.